So when we have smooth muscle, smooth muscle can be a unit or it can be a multi-unit. If it's going to be this visceral, well, the cells, they're in a sheet. Think about the ureter tubes, okay? The ureters. They're doing this number, and they're a hollow tube, right? And it's this smooth muscle around, and it's a sheet of the smooth muscle functioning as a unit. So, it will contract, relax, contract, relax, contract, relax, and all the way down that ureter tube, the ureter, okay? When it's contracting and relaxing, it's propelling that urine forward into the bladder. Does that make sense? So they're functioning as a unit. Multi-unit, We've got the cells or the groups of cells, but they're going to be independent, okay? For example, do you guys rem remember the erector pili muscle? It was smooth muscle, but it acted to pull that one hair, right? Okay, so that, that one group of cells for the smooth muscle at the base of that hair was what was making the hair stand up straight. All right, don't worry, we're gonna, we'll get more into this. The other thing to mention about smooth muscle, contractions are much slower, okay? Based on the information, the nerve stimulation that they're going to receive, okay? Now, this is gonna be cells in parts of the body where it's autorhythmic. Okay, meaning that it's controlled by something else. We can affect it, okay, but the autonomic nervous system for the most part is controlling it. The contractions are much slower and they last, in some cases, a lot longer. In other words, there are some areas in our body that the contraction can last hours because it's smooth muscle, all right? Don't get too... Um, what would be get, an example of that? Like if you've got your stomach and your intestines digesting the food. Okay. So, contractions are slower, they can last longer. We're still dependent on our ions. You know, we've got calcium, we've got sodium, okay? It does not follow the all or none principle, okay? In other words, we don't have a threshold that we have to reach. In some cases, we're gonna have a pacemaker cell. Keep that in mind. It gets controlled by the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and the hormones, the endocrine system. Some of the smooth muscle is going to be autorhythmic, meaning it set its own pace. It usually responds to stretch. Right now, you're probably thinking about lunch or something, okay? Right now, your stomach basically in a relaxed state, okay? But if you go and eat, it's going to stretch out a little bit. The response of what needs to take place will be due to stretching of the stomach muscles. Because the, have you ever seen like pictures where they show the stomach stretching out, coming back, uh, recoiling, stretching, recoiling? It's really kind of cool. So that will actually affect the, um, the function of the smooth muscle. We do see it be innervated by the autonomic nervous system, which we're gonna learn more about. 
the neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, norepinephrine, endocrine system. Hormones, okay, such as epinephrine and then oxytocin, which we're going to learn about too, are going to affect the actual contraction of smooth muscle. Receptors for the hormones are going to be on the plasma membrane. The neurotransmitters, the hormones that will bind, will determine the response, meaning we can have it respond or not respond, which is kind of cool. If we're going to find that we have receptors in the plasma membrane, do you guys remember how the, recept the molecule doesn't move into the cell? It attaches to the receptor and sets off a series of reactions in the cell. If that's the case, do you remember how it could affect the protein that was already made? Or it can go down and it can affect the DNA directly. Okay, don't forget that because we're going to come back to that. And then cardiac muscle. Termed cardiac for a reason. It's only in the heart. It is striated. Each cell is cell to cell to cell to cell. It has a nucleus. We're going to find the intercalated discs. Those are going to be the gap junctions. Definitely autorhythmic. The heart is innervated, but it's not dependent on the nervous system to beat. Action potentials are going to get interesting. Calcium, once again, will regulate the contractions of the heart. But trust me, we're going to get into that a lot in part two. So what's going to happen as we get older? Muscle mass is going to get reduced. The time for muscle contraction to respond to the nervous stimuli, well, we're going to find that it's going to take a little longer to have the contraction. Stamina is definitely going to get reduced. I mean, I was just telling a friend of mine yesterday, okay, I recognize I'm 50, but my mind still thinks I'm 30, but the body still reminds me I'm not. Okay, so it does happen. It takes longer to recover. Like if I was to go do my one mile run, it might take me the rest of the day to recover. I am gonna lose some of my, it's gonna lose some of my muscle fibers and the density of the capillaries, meaning the blood supply to my muscle fibers is gonna decrease. Like I keep telling y'all, Stuff's gonna break down. Chapter 11 is done. So are we gonna have some questions on smoothing cardiac muscle in the final?